All right. Hello, YouTube. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, my name is Rosh, and this is a video series I'm putting together called Axe Facts 3 Basics, a little about me. I'm an LA-based guitar player and guitar tech. Some of my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, Perfect Circle, Bush, and more. So I uh, wanted to put together a video series uh, to give back to the Fractal community, talk about some of my approaches to programming presets, answer all your questions. Um, thank you so much for sharing, uh, liking, subscribing, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, feel free to do it. Hope all these videos are helping you guys out. Thank you so much for the feedback. I truly appreciate it. If you guys ever need one-on-one -on -one help, by all means, feel free to reach out to me. Um, Okay, so I had a couple of requests to actually do a video on how to use the Axe FX3 with a solid state or uh, tube power amp. And that's actually the main setup and the main way I use the Axe FX3 live. So um, what you're going to hear is I'm going to blend in a room mic at certain points in this video. So um, I just have a, you know, a microphone sitting in the center of the room of my studio. And um, so we can talk about how to send basically a clean DI signal. Um, not clean DI, but more like a direct sound from the Axe FX direct to front of house, and then also use a cabinet on stage. So you get the best of both worlds. You get your guitar cabinet sound while you're playing, um, something that all of us guitar players are definitely used to. And then you also get like your studio quality sound being sent to front of house without any microphones needed. You don't need to mic your cabinet up, and then you can um, run in stereo to front of house. You can get all your uh, nice effects. You can use cabinet IRs, all that kind of stuff. And um, in my personal opinion, that is probably the best way to run the Axe FX. So um, what I do is I run the Axe FX 3 into a Matrix Solid State GT1000 FX power amp. That's the main power amp I use. I have used other power amps, as well as uh, a lot of my clients use all kinds of different power amps. So you just have to find the power amp that's right for you. Um, I use the GT1000 FX Solid State just because it's really light. Um, it doesn't weigh as much as a tube power amp, and uh, obviously pre-COVID, I was doing a lot of gigs. I was playing, you know, probably three or four nights a week, so I'm um, schlepping the, the rack, a four-space rack around. I didn't want to have, like, a tube power amp because that would add, like, probably another 30, 40 pounds to the rack. Uh, I wanted something that was lightweight, grab-and-go, and then I w in L.A., there's a lot of um, places where there's backline cabinets, so you can just bring the rack and your pedal board plug into whatever the house cabinet is, and then the cool thing is you get... You still get uh, the audience still hears your you know um, sounds that you put together at home in your studio or in your home recording setup, as well as you can also feed that into your in ears. You can feed that into the uh, if there's a wedge there, you can feed it into the wedge that's uh, you know sitting in front of uh, you know on the stage or whatever. So it's a really great versatile way because the cool thing is if there's wedges at the venue that you're playing at. If the stage volume coming off the stage is too loud, you can always turn down the power amp independent of the Axe FX3 and then just have them send more um, signal through the front wedges. So anyways, here is kind of how uh, to build a preset that basically runs that. So what I'm doing is, let's do a quick build. And in the actual rack itself that I have, um, I'm basically running my guitar into the front and then coming out of uh, output three of the Axe FX is running into the input of the power amp. So really, this is all you kind of need to do. You can start here. Now there's a couple key things you want to be aware of. So let's put an amp and a cab here. And uh, let's use, I don't know, what did this pick? Captain Hook, why not? All right, and then let's pick uh, something Usually I like, I'm, I'm definitely prefer greenbacks. Um, so the, my particular cabinet that I use, and uh, I'll throw a picture up here at some point, is the um, Port City 212 um, with, and it has a Scumback M75s in it. So they're basically like um, high powered greenbacks. Sounds really nice, a uh, really versatile cabinet. So, okay, uh, here is this cabinet block, the amp block, and then here we'll do these settings. Okay, so here's like your basic sound. And let's add a little more gain, let's add some bass. Let's bring the volume of this up a little bit. Great, so real basic sound. 
Um, this is out one is what front of house would be hearing. So you would take an XLR and it doesn't matter if you run stereo or mono, there's some settings that you might want to consider when doing that. But for the time being, let's say, assume we're running stereo to front of house. So you just take two XLR cables, plug them into outputs one left and right. And then that's what gets sent to the main mixing console. That's what the audience is going to hear. That's also what you're going to hear in your wedges or your in-ears. Um, if you're using an in-ear system, you can also uh, take any of the outputs out of your Axe FX into your in-ear units first, into the inputs of your in-ear units first, and then send them to front of house. But the only issue when you do that is you'll only hear guitar in your in-ears, not a full mix. So I'd recommend going from out one at the back of the Axe FX, uh, left and right, to the front of house engineer and then have them mix your in ears so they would use one of their auxiliary inputs and then you can get a mix of your guitar plus vocals, drums, backing tracks, whatever you need on stage. Okay, so now let's talk about what's going on and how to get it to go into this output three. So one of the main things that you want to avoid is you don't want to send the cabinet block into output three because that's like stacking a cabinet into another cabinet. So since I'm running out of output three into the solid state power amp into the guitar cabinet, it's like redundant. You're doing double guitar cabinet duties. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna add a lot of really weird woofy bass. So for example, I'm gonna mute out one right now. So now you're just gonna hear this room mic. <laughs> okay. Now what you wanna do is you wanna put the cabinet after wherever the shunt of output three is, okay? So a lot of my presets, what you'll see is um, I'll have the output three somewhere down here. I'll have the cabinet block actually last, and I'll go into out three. And then again, here's the room mic. If I mute this and I play this, this is what the direct sound would be. And that's pretty much it. Now, there's a couple of things that you want to be aware of. So first off, we want to make sure that the cabinet block is always after the shunt, wherever you split off to output three. Now, there's a couple of issues that you're going to run into here. Obviously, if you run any effects after the cab block, they're only going to be sent to out three. So for example, if we do a delay block, I'm going to mute output three right now. And what you're going to hear is that the delay only gets sent to front of house, but it does not get sent to your cabinet. Okay, now this could be useful in certain situations. So for example, um, some presets I have built and some of my, um, some of the presets that I have used and built in the past is like, uh, I would have a dry cabinet on stage. So for example, I would have a reverb only being sent to front of house, but when I have uh, whatever is coming out of my cabinet, since the room that I'm playing in already has kind of some ambient reverb, I wouldn't add any reverb to this, so my amp would be dry. Now the cool thing is um, that certain effects um, are much more clear. You'll get a little bit better frequency response if there's no reverb going to your onstage guitar cabinet. Um, some of the notes will interact with your um, fingers a little bit more like if you're using a lot of overdrive if you want that like you know natural feedback or anything like that um, that's really a nice way to do it so for example if we take a drive block we'll use ta wait i'll just make kind of like a lead sound ish and the cool thing is <laughs> So that's an effective way so that you don't have any wet sounds going to your dry ca uh, going to your cabinet on stage. And each, it really depends on the user. Some of my presets actually have the cab at the end. And what you want to do is, if let's say you want the same effect going both to your cabinet on stage and your cabinet, your cabinet IR going to front of house, then what you're going to need to do is put your effects before the cabinet. So couple things that you want to be aware of. So for example, let's say I want a delay block here instead, and you want the delay to happen both in your onstage cabinet as well as front of house, you need to have your delays 
before the cap lock. So here is what you front of house would hear. And then this is what you would hear on stage. So now you get one delay block and you can go there. And so now combined, you would have both delay both into the cabinet and out one. So that's an effective way. Now a couple things you wanna keep in mind is that if you are running to front of house, you have to make sure that you are picking the cabinet that's either gonna be mono, that means you're only sending out of the left um, output, you're only sending one output, or if you're running stereo, you definitely wanna make sure that you're running stereo cabinets, and then you wanna pan your cabinets left and right. So for example, if we take the same uh, cabinet right here, let's pick a 412, and where did it go? Ah, here we go. And let's say we're doing that one. We're going to unmute that. We want to make sure we pan left and right. And then we want to make sure that the input mode stereo. And then let's use a stereo delay so it's easier to hear. So we'll use a ping pong delay. And now you can hear that it's going to pan left and right. So now the stereo signal being sent to front of house, you get a left and right spread for your delays because if this was set to left or it was mono, you'd only hear on one side. So you hear that or you'd only hear the right side. And you see it's like running right up the middle. So you want stereo if you really need those panning effects. Okay, now again, the cool thing is that your onstage cabinet is gonna be just, it's only gonna hear one side and it depends on what side you are sending um, out of your Axe effects. Right now I have only left, the left side of output three of the Axe effects going into my power amp. So of course you're only gonna hear the left side of this delay. So um, obviously you're only hearing just one side of it right now. So be wary of any panning effects. Um, so effects that don't pan, you won't have any issue. So these are some of the challenges that you're going to run into when you run, in, uh, when you run a solid state power amp with cabinets. Of course, if you're using um, most cabinet or most power amps nowadays are stereo power amps, so you can actually run into two cabinets on stage as well, and then you can get all your panning effects um, there. So you would have uh, two cabinets, one that's uh, coming from the left side of the power amp and one that's coming from the right side of the power amp. I don't do that because I don't want to bring two cabinets to a gig. Um, I generally run mono out of my cab here, and then I generally either run stereo or mono going out of front of house. And most of my effects uh, going into the cab on stage, I make sure that they are separate. So for example, if you want to run stereo out of output one, which would go to front of house, but you want to run mono into your cabinets on stage, you would do something like this. You want to split off your shunt down here to output three. And then now the cool thing is anything after this split, you have independent effects um, going to front of house and then you have independent effects going to your cabinet on stage. So just like I mentioned earlier, sometimes you want a dry cabinet sound, but you want a wet um, sound being sent to front of house. So you would do something like this where you any um, effects that you send to uh, your cabinet on stage will only be heard on the cabinet on stage. So for example, I'll stick a, something that we can really hear. So maybe, let's say phaser. So right now, the way this is set up is only out one has delays and only my cabinet on stage has a phaser. So here's my phaser. And then, when you send to out one, front of house, there's no phaser, but there's delay. So this is a really effective way to control independent effects depending on what you want to hear. Um, and of course, it's up to your imagination, up to your needs of what you want. So there's lots of different options, um, but generally, good rule of thumb is that you want your, if you're going to run stereo to front of house, but mono to your cabinets, you want your mono effects only running to your cabinets and your stereo effects going to front of house. Again, this is also dependent and contingent of you having um, only one cabinet on stage that is mono. So if you have 
stereo cabinets on stage and you're running stereo on uh, front of house. Awesome. Good for you. Now you can, you can run stereo and everything, but let's just say for the sake of argument, you want, uh, like a ping pong delay going to front of house. Okay. So it's panning left and right, but you real but you only want mono delays going to your cabinet on stage. What you would need to do is make sure that you have a separate delay type separate delay block that's mono as opposed to stereo like this ping pong and then now your on stage cabinet has some delay on it so i'll just play this is the room mic and here is what front of house would hear which is in stereo and the cool thing is of course you can also rearrange your cabinet block so that the delays come after the cabinet block or whatever your heart desires. You know, you have a lot of different options there. So again, it's all about splitting the shunt off. And then now here is both sounds combined. And of course, since they're independent, you can have different um, settings. So like, for example, pretty common setting is doing something like this, where you would use a dual delay, and then 375 to 500. Here is what front of house would hear. Okay, so that's going to pan, but uh, down here, if we use a uh, dual delay, what we want to do is we can do the same settings, but we just want to make sure that they're not panned right here. So we'll put them right up the middle. So it's all about the panning and just making sure that you're aware of where the things are panned. Because if you do have panning, you're only going to hear one side. For example, you're only going to hear the left side if I pan these. Okay. But I want to make sure that they're panned right up the center. And then now my onstage cabinet has the same effect as what is being heard in front of house. And it's all because they're panned right up the center. So these are some approaches on how to do some of your presets. Um, and so uh, that's like, you know, a lot of different approaches on how to split between front of house and a cabinet on stage. So uh, if there's any questions or anything else you'd like me to cover on this subject, I'll be more than happy to. There are, there's a lot to cover. So this is just kind of like an overview, some basics, some rules of thumb, some heuristics that you can follow. So the main takeaway is, of course, split before the cab block um, when you're sending. So you only send the cab IR to front of house and then split to output three. And now, one of the reasons why people ask me, well, why do you use output three as opposed to output two? Output three is designed to be unity gain. So what you wanna do is you wanna set the output three knob on the front of the AxeFX three fully clockwise. So it's turned all the way up and it's being fed into your power amp. And in the power amp volume, whatever your power amp you're using, a Mesa Boogie, um, an angle, a matrix, whatever, the volume knob on the front of your power amp is going to determine your stage volume. So that is going to be the last uh, bit of advice concerning the subject. Uh, if you want me to cover any more regarding the subject, uh, especially using in-ears and stuff, I would be more than happy to do so in a future video. Other than that, take care, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Hey.